ಶ್ರೀ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಸಾಯಿನಾಥ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಚ್ಚರಿತ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಪ್ರೊಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಸಾಯಿ ಬೈ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಟೆಂಪ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಟು ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟ್ ದ ಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮನಾಥನ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಟೆಲಿಕಾಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಟಿ ವಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ಲಿ ಡನ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ದ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ ಟು ದಿ ಆಸ್ಪಿರೆನ್ಸ್ ಓಂ ಗುರುರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುರ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಡೆವೋಟೀಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಲಿಸ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಗ್ಲೋರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಆಸ್ ನರೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಹೇಮತ್ ಪಂಜಿ ವೈಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಚ್ಚರಿತ್ರ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ನೈನ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಹೈಲೈಟೆಡ್ ದ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿಕಲ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಾಬಾಸ್ ಮೆಂಡಿಕ್ಯಾನ್ಸಿ ಥ್ರೂ ವಿಚ್ ದ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹೌಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡರ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಇರಾಡಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟೈಟಲ್ ಬೈ ಹೇಮತ್ ಪಂಜಿ ಬಟ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ವೆನ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೆವೋಟಿ ಬಿ ವಿ ದೇವ್ ಕಂಪೈಲ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಿ ಟೈಟಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗೇವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಆಸ್ ಬಾಬಾಸ್ ಮೆಂಡಿಕೆನ್ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನೆಸೆಸಿಟಿ ಇಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾನ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲಯನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಬಾಬಾಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೀವಿಂಗ್ ಶಿರಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟಾರ್ಕಡ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲೀಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸಸ್ ಟಾರ್ಕಡ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲೀಸ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಬಾಬಾ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬಲ್ ಅ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆನ್ಸ್ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಕನ್ವಿಕ್ಷನ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಟಾರ್ಕಡ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಪ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ಲಿ ಹೈಲೈಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಚ್ಚರಿತ್ರ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ three family members of tarkad's family were blessed to have been in close contact with baba and had personally experienced his divinity among those three the most highly devoted soul was the small boy from tarkad's family wide sri sai sacharitra this small boy was jyotindra tarkad in fact his name is not mentioned in sri sai sacharitra but just referred to as a small boy baba tarkad alias ramachandra atmaram tarkad is the head of this family his wife was sita bai tarkad and jyotindra was one of their sons though jyotindra was the youngest among all the three devotees his devotion to baba was unparalleled he can be considered as the main character of the story because baba made jyotindra as an instrument to pull the entire family towards him as per baba's pronouncement though my man be thousands of miles away from me i pull him to me in the same way as a sparrow with a thread tied to its feet in accordance to this statement the small sparrow in this case was jyotindra baba used jyotindra to draw his family and to appreciate their extraordinary devotion towards him tarkad's family is very big wealthy reputed and had great political influence many exceptional incidences related to this blessed family are not mentioned in sri sai sacharitra devotees please listen carefully ramachandra atmaram tarkad is known by different names such as baba tarkad atmaram tarkad and in english literatures he is referred as senior tarkad don't be misled all these names represents just one person that is ramachandra atmaram tarkad his son was jyotindra that is the small boy as per sri sai sacharitra and that jyotindra's son virendra wrote a remarkable book narrating all the unfathomable leelas experienced by their family and titled it as live experiences of the tarkad family with shri sai baba of shirdi we are not sure if this book was released but 
we can cherish the divine experiences bestowed by Baba upon this family by browsing in the internet. He has elucidated all the experiences that were shared by his father Jyotindra, which as a child sounded like fairy tales to him. I bet, given a chance to read this book, none of you will pause until you complete it. Undoubtedly, it's a masterpiece. Devotees, you might be baffled to listen to my compliments to this book and wonder why should I give considerable importance to this in comparison with Sri Sai Sacharitra? No, that's not the case. Even Hemat Panji has mentioned in Sri Sai Sacharitra chapter 9 that he was dumbfounded to hear the experiences of Sri Atmaram Tarkad and says, with brimming love for Sai, Tarkad used to be overwhelmed and as it were be anointed by it when he described his experiences with Sai and listening to them was a pleasure. Many miracles are not recorded in Sri Sai Sacharitra because all the Leelas narrated by Hemat Panji related to this family was only in the perspective of Sri Ramachandra Atmaram Tarkad the head of the family. But his son, the then small boy Jyotindra, had marvelous experiences with Baba owing to his unparalleled devotion and we will be listening to those wonderful experiences in the coming episodes. Let me share my thoughts with you all. For some reason, during my initial days of Parayanam of Sri Sai Sacharitra chapter 9, I was unable to comprehend few things. To mention, Baba is considered as an embodiment of God by Mr. and Mrs. Tarkat and their small boy. As per Sri Sai Sacharitra, the father is forcing the boy to go to Shiradi whereas the boy was unwilling to go as he thought his father would not care for idol worship, hence might not worship Sai Baba's idol properly. Here I got a basic doubt. We all would love to go to Shiradi, no matter if Baba is in his mortal coil or not. But for Tarkat, the situation was different. Baba, the God on earth, was sitting in Shiradi. When Baba himself was physically present there, then what is the need to worry about the puja to be performed at home rather than going for his darshan? So, I was pondering if Hemat Panji has exaggerated the situation or, frankly speaking, I thought, some significant connection to this incident was missing. I tried to search for clues in Sri Sai Sacharitra, but all in vain, because the Leelas shared by Mr. Tarkat with Hemat Panji was very few and the author penned down whatever was communicated to him. Let us contemplate more on the topic. Why did Mr. Tarkat give importance to the puja at his residence when compared to Darshan of Baba? It is because this blessed family had a divine portrait of Baba at their house which holds higher import and the whole family was showing greater reverence to this picture and worshipped it devotedly. The worship and devotion they exhibited to this portrait was so great that they felt it should not be discontinued for any reason. Hence, they gave more importance to this portrait of Baba. Many incidences are not revealed in Sri Sai Sacharitra, but they were shared by Sri Ramachandra Jyotindra Tarkad to his son Jyotindra Tarkad and he narrated from time to time their divine association with Baba that spanned from the year 1908 to 1918 to his son Virendra. Virendra states, 
my family has experienced something divine during their association with Baba and they were the precious possessions of their lifetime which is difficult for any common man to acquire. During our casual talks, my father had shared many blissful experiences that were granted to him and my grandparents by Baba. Every experience was unique and every narration will be an outpour of his expressions and emotions revealing his intense love for Baba. For instance, once Baba spoke thus, Bahu, since we will not meet any more, please ask for anything you desire. I would like to grant a boon for you. Who else is befitting to give us this option to the devotee other than the Parabrahman himself? If the same question was posed to any other person, they might have desired for many worldly things. But... Jyotindra never craved for any material wealth. In another situation, Baba gave a golden test to Jyotindra in Lendibog. Baba took Jyotindra to Lendibog and showed him gold that was buried in the soil and told him to take as much as he wants. Jyotindra replied, Baba, I don't want this. Still Baba signaled with his eyes and insisted him to take it. Jyotindra denied, Baba, I don't need any materialistic thing. I just need one boon from you. Please make sure your blessings are always there with me and under no circumstances you should fade away from my memory in future. Devotees, it is inevitable to ponder upon this boon. Unless a person's heart and soul are enthralled with paramount devotion towards his guru, he would not think of beseeching for such a grace. In fact, Baba prompted Jyotindra again and said, I have kept all these treasures for you, so better accept it. But Jyotindra's mind was not inclined towards the worldly gifts. He said, Baba, I am certain your blessings are with me and that will grant a peaceful and comfortable life. Now, please grant me the boon that I had requested for. Baba responded, Bahu, I am unable to grant this wish of yours as my Lord has not permitted me to get bound with anyone. However, you need not get disappointed. I promise you that in our next birth, when we are 10 years old, we will be sitting together and eating in one plate. These incidences are narrated by Veerendra in his writings. The devotion of Jyotindra towards Baba was supreme. Hence, even after Baba's Mahasamadhi, Jyotindra, for the rest of his life, used every opportunity to share the blissful experiences to his son Virendra, which was an expression of his devotion and fondness towards his god Sai Baba. I implore each one of you to read this divine literature, which is a great treasure to all the Sai Bhaktas. I am confident that all of you will be greatly impressed as it would convey a wide spectrum of the divine place of Sai. I strongly feel that you all will get to perceive and realize the Vishwaroop of Baba which means that Baba is not a normal being, but an embodiment of God. When I personally read Sri Sai Satcharitra chapter 9, I didn't catch the purport of this chapter. For instance, it is mentioned that Mr. Ramachandra Atmaram Tarkad, formerly a Prarthana Samajist. Prarthana Samajist would never entertain idol worship. So, this statement from Sri Sai Satcharitra gives an understanding that 
Baba had converted him to accept idol worship, whereas his father was the founder of this Pratana Samaj. Brahma Samaj was founded by Sri Raja Ram Mohan Rai, Arya Samaj by Sri Swami Dayanand Saraswati. Likewise, Pratana Samaj was instituted by two people, one was Shakaram Arjun and the other one was Atmaram Pandurang, father of Ramachandra Atmaram Tarkad. We can very well comprehend that Ramachandra Atmaram Tarkad would earnestly follow the principles of the Samaj that was founded by his dad. It is incredible to note that such a person was transformed to idol worship. Let me throw some light on this topic. In the Madhyana Arati song, Jayadeva Jayadeva Datta Vaduta O Sai Avaduta, we come across the lines, Nashti ka nahi tu nijabajani, which means, Baba has even converted an atheist to a devotee. These verses have been encompassed in the Arati to reflect the alteration brought by Baba on Ramachandra Atmaram Tarkad. Though followers of Pratana Samajas cannot be termed as an atheist, but were considered as social reformers because they were against idol worship and were also treated as adversaries of Hindu religion. Hence, the society treated them as atheists. In fact, even the previous two generations of Ramachandra Atmaram Tarkad were social reformers. I would like to share a brief note about their family. Their great-grandfather, Atmaram Pandurang, had fought the Battle of Basin Fort along with the great Maratha warrior Chimaji Appa against the Portuguese who were defeated in the battle. As a recognition of their bravery, Chimaji Appa granted them Jahagiri of Tarkad village. As Atmaram Pandurang settled in Tarkad village near Vasaj Fort, that is Fort of Basin, became their native place, hence they got the surname Tarkadkar. In the previous episodes, we have discussed about the practice adopted by Maharashtrians in naming their children. This is how the sequence goes. The first name is the name given to the person, then his father's name and then the surname will be their native village or their profession. So, when you read the name of a person, you will get to know whose son he is and which place he belongs to or what job he is involved in. The name gives the complete identity of the person and the same practice is followed even today. For instance, if the surname is Kulkarni, it means an accountant or a village officer. Or if it is Shimpi, then must be a tailor or a cloth merchant. So, the surname will either indicate the native place of a person or his job. Likewise, as this family lived in Tarkad village, they got their last name as Tarkadkar or Tarkad. Now, this Pandurang had two sons, Dadoba Pandurang and Atmaram Pandurang. These two Pandurangs were also social reformers like their father and became very popular. Devotees, you can google their names and will get to read an extensive note on the various social reforms, literary works and achievements accomplished by them during their lifetime. They reinforced the principles of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, such as introducing widow remarriage, encourage female education, and abolish child marriage. They also founded the Pratana Samaj. Daddoba wrote extensively on religion. His major contribution was the grammar of Marathi. He has written many poems, authored several books. The most significant among them was the absurdity of the holy festival 
as it is now practiced by the Hindus. I have a reason to highlight this book. This not only expresses the orthodox beliefs and practices adopted by the people during those days, but also educates the real essence of the festival and how that has been distorted and misunderstood in the present era. So, it is evident that Dadoba's contribution and efforts were remarkable in bringing the various social reforms in the nation. Atmaram Tarkad founded the Pratana Samaj. He also served briefly as Sharif of Mumbai. This Atmaram's son was Ramachandra Atmaram Tarkad, who was blessed to have darshan of our Sai Baba. He was also wealthy and popular. He had three siblings. His elder brother was Moreshwar Atmaram obtained a gold medal in practical chemistry and got honors in mathematics and geology at University College London. His sister was Annapurna or Anna. Rabindranath Tagore wrote several poems in her memory and he referred to her as Nalini. Devotees, Tarkad's family that has gained so much popularity in the society as social reformers, scholars, highly educated family and wealthy was drawn by Baba. Of course, it is never a task for Baba to pull a sparrow to his abode. He is omnipotent and all-pervasive. But the reason for emphasizing this situation is because Tarkat's family is completely against the practices and principles of Hindu traditions they are a family of theistic reformers. At this point, we need to perceive the significance behind Baba's divine play in bringing this family to his divine path. One can't perceive the godly powers of Baba. It is unfathomable and incomprehensible for our simple minds. It is just his grace and compassion that brought this kind of great transformation in the hearts of Tarkat family. The live experiences of Tarkat family with Shirdi Sai Baba speaks volumes of the grace showered by Baba upon their family. Devotees, please recall. At the beginning of this thread, I had mentioned that we can realize Baba's Vishwarupam, that is, another outlook of Baba, by getting more insight on this topic. Because the understanding that I got from Sri Sai Sacharitra was, Baba had pulled a follower of Pratana Samaj. But after reading the above-mentioned literature, I understood that Baba has brought a change in the mind of a person who hailed in the lineage of the founders of this Pratana Samaj. Atmaram was acquainted with Rabindranath Tagore and when Tagore intended to visit England, he stayed for a time in Atmaram Pandurang's Mumbai home and sought to improve his English with the assistance of Pandurang's second daughter, Anna. In fact, Tagore has expressed in his writings that he was attracted towards her command over the language and shrewdness. It is believed that he had a desire to even marry her. So, in her memory, referring Anna as Nalini, Tagore wrote several poems. The youngest sister of Ramachandra Atmaram Tarkad was Manik Tarkad. She passed the licentiate of medicine and surgery. Those days, it was a great challenge for women to pursue higher education. That too, getting into doctor's profession was a Himalayan task. During the same period, another lady by name Manik also pursued her doctor's degree and she was the daughter of another famous social reformer, Mahadev Govind Ranade. Even Ramachandra Atmaram Tarkat's father, Atmaram Pandurang, was a doctor with an MBBS degree. He was serving as a doctor for the Viceroy during the British regime. 
the viceroy was an englishman and atmaram was his personal doctor devotees might wonder what need is there to give so much importance to the positions held by the family members of tarkat but you will understand the purport of my description when he, when you heed to the miracle which will be narrated shortly through this divine play baba pulled the ty- little tarkat's mother to shirdi healed her ailments and blessed the family abundantly please hold on to this thought to connect the dots as we listen to the godly powers of sai baba i humbly request the listeners to not mistake my intentions this episode is not to propagate the greatness of tarkat's family but an attempt to bring to the notice of the listeners the glory of our sai his unimaginable supernatural powers the profound meaning of his leelas and his incredible healing powers that has enriched this family with multifold experiences coming back to the original thread the hero of this story is jyotindra tarkad son of ramachandra atmaram tarkad and sita devi tarkad jyotindra had a sibling named satyendra who was a doctor manik tarkad aunt of jyotindra and his grandfather atmaram pandurang were also doctors so three blood relatives of ramachandra tarkad were doctors hence this family was identified as doctor's family and they all lived as a joint family sita devi tarkad wife of ramachandra tarkad a member of this doctor's family was afflicted with severe migraine and the pain was excruciating she would experience a hammering pain on her head and would cry as that was unbearable all the doctors in the family have tried various medications still it was untreatable the pain would not subside for any treatments but only the grace of baba relieved her from this agonizing pain which is undoubtedly a great miracle we shall listen to this unfathomable divine play of our sai baba in the next episode bow to shri sai peace be to all om sai ram